On the bench today we have a, another Communications Power Incorporated or CPI FC70 frequency counter. Uh, this one came in had uh, this display digit was out. Um, otherwise seemed to be working okay. Um, customer wanted the electrolytic capacitors changed in it and just go through it because it had been worked on before. Wanted to make sure everything was okay. And, you know, a little bit of sloppy soldering so that was straightened out. And God, the more of these things I work on, the more I understand why they are mass murderers and whatnot in the world. Because, ugh, <laughs> I had to work on shit like this every single day. Uh, yeah, I'd probably turn into a mass murderer of engineers. <laughs> Not electrical engineers, mechanical engineers. Because, man, I've had a bunch, a bunch of shit in a row lately. It's just... It's not the electronics that makes you scratch your head. It's the person that designed the housing or how stuff's mounted. So, you know, it's the mechanical engineer that was drawing up the drawings for how to, you know, how this thing is assembled. And ah, ha, ha, it's another one of those. You just kind of, you know, sit back, laugh at yourself, think, okay, <laughs> and, you know, move on. Because uh, getting mad does no good. But, uh, yeah, what makes these such a pain in the neck is is the way that it's mounted okay so you'd open it up and you'd look at it and go ah it's easy to work on look all the components are right there yeah but to get to the underside of the circuit board so you can ser actually service this thing you know troubleshooting's fine you can get to all of the, the you know leads and everything from the top side to take measurements but when it comes time to actually change anything you have to completely dismantle it so this front panel rear panel the circuit board the transformer everything and there's an, then there's the voltage regulator which is bolted or screwed to the bottom, you know, cover, and because it uses that as a heat sink, um, that all has to come apart. Well, now everything's still attached with wires, and it's flopping around, and yeah, what you usually end up doing, it's the same thing that happened to me, is you're flipping it back and forth, back and where you got it, trying to hold it up, and wires break off, and, you, and then I finally, I'm getting ready to put it back together after I got it fixed, and I'm in the process of screwing the uh, voltage regulator back onto the bottom cover and one of the wires broke off of that it's oh my god <laughs> like i say you better have a sense of humor just laugh at yourself <laughs> so it's been put back together now all of the wires are attached <laughs> so it's up and running again uh what this ended up needing was it needed uh, ended up needing a display segment and it also needed the tra uh one transistor which is uh, associated directly with this uh, display so that's that's been replaced um, and it's now working so it's hooked up to the radio right here and it just got done calibrate which actually having the cover off this long might have thrown the calibration off a little bit because after you get done working on one of these if you want to calibrate it you almost have to turn these on and let them on for about 45 minutes or an hour because it you know to get completely hot because it's a frequency counter um, it does not have a crystal oven other than the <laughs> you know, cabinet itself, so, um, the frequency is going to drift all over the place, you know, uh, until this thing stabilizes in temperature, and then even once it does, adjusting this stinking little trimmer capacitor right here, that little green guy, so that's your actual f adjustment for what the, what it's displaying, um, adjusting that can be a chore because it's really, really sensitive um, you know, you turn it the tiniest bit and you just, you just jumped up five or 600 Hertz. Um, you know, turn you there, just barely turn it just a little bit more and ah, oh, crap, it just dropped 800 Hertz and you're, you know, you're, <laughs> it's, it's really tricky. But, uh, so in any case, like I say, it's been on for quite a while now, you know, I just set the cover back on there, but yeah, I can feel the bottom. It's hot because, yeah, these things, once you let them on for a long time, they get really, really hot. They make great coffee warmers, you know, <laughs> just piss at you. I don't recommend setting liquids on top of electronics, but, you know, if you were so inclined, this is the perfect coffee warmer because once this thing gets hot, that's a great place to set your coffee cup. You'll never have to worry about it cooling down completely. Um, so, like I said, it's hooked up. I have the... Uh, radio hooked up to the input of this it comes out of this goes out the coax cable over to uh, the bk1040 and then that's attached to that frequency counter the output of that is attenuated down and goes to that frequency counter right there so we key the microphone
So you can see we're rated uh, 27185225, and this is rated 22, and it's jumping between. Now this is missing the last uh, digit. So this this is tens because if you flip this switch to kilohertz, you'll see the decimal point move. So this is uh, hundreds, tens, and then this is your uh, you know first digit, which is missing. So, but you can see it's jumping. So it's as close as you're going to get it because I could spend another half hour to an hour trying to get to that thing to where. It will change to you know two three when when that changes to two three zero. So actually that's about right because usually you'll have them where they'll like this digit when you get past the halfway point you know two two five and above it, it'll you you know flip up. So that's right around. You can see it's even it's changing now. It's dropping down. Like I say, put the cover back on. I got to wait for this thing to completely stabilize in temperature because I had to cover off. Um, like I say, it's a big downfall of this kind of counter. It's not a lab counter that has a you know temperature controlled uh, oscillator in it. But uh, for what they for what they do, they're fine. Um, like I say, it's just work. Actually, working on them can be a, a bit of a chore. And one of the big problems with these is the double sided circuit board. Um, you know, people work on them and they end up screwing the traces up on them. So, you know, always keep an eye out for stuff like that. It's not uncommon to find circuit traces all screwed up on these things. But uh, this is another one. It's been uh, rescued, is working again. Um, cosmetics, it's, you know, the cabinet's in pretty good condition. Um, the customer did say this thing was mounted originally in a mobile application. So that's why there was two nut search. You can see it been installed in the the top cover. Apparently this was used in mobile application. Yeah, the faceplate decal, it's a little, you know, it's kind of separating and coming unstuck. There's not really much you can do for that. <laughs> um, heat has a lot to do with that, so, you know, if this thing was left on a lot, this faceplate face gets hot and the glue, you know, it might let pop loose. And then also this, you know, being used in a mobile application, so, you know, if your vehicle sits out in the sun, this is going to get really hot again, and you turn it on, that's even, you know, it's doubly as hot as it normally would be. But, uh, yep, yeah, so it's, you know, good work encounter again. So there we have a FC-70 counter back up and running.